get started. I'm just keeping an eye uh, an eye on the waiting room as well. I'll do so that. Ross. Don't worry about it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So the usual participation stuff. Um, do feel free to jump into chat. Uh, you know, we will be for the most part uh, saving comments for the end. Uh, you know, especially during the reports. I know that everyone will have comments about the reports and stuff like that, but I just respectfully ask that uh, for the most part we save those or bring it up in chat so that we can bring it into the conversation at a convenient time. Uh, and we'll keep things running snappily that way. Uh, as far as the agenda for today goes, um, you know, first of all, we're going to just do a quick approval of the minutes and talk about uh, Shelley's role. She's been doing a fantastic job as membership chair. We'll go through the various board reports, uh, a little bit of new business to cover off. And I'm hoping that uh, Lloyd Ritchie will be joining us tonight to talk about some of the upcoming races, but otherwise, uh, Christina, I'm glad to see you here. And then finally, um, we'll talk about some of the proposed events uh, on the calendar, prefacing that with the conversation we had earlier about whether or not we can be doing things in person at the stage. So all sounds great. All right, let's keep going. Um, so just want to spend a quick moment saying welcome and thank you. Eric, I love this picture oh of you. Oh my god. Oh my Are you gosh. kidding me? Yeah, you can totally, but you can totally oh it's so good. You're just such oh. a dude. I swear you can you can um, you know it's been great. I've had Monique and the girls like sending me pictures of all the adventures you guys have been having. Shells, I've been loving all the pictures that have been coming through. Um, I believe uh you know, Shelly, you can probably verify this. This was what, the Three Bridge Fiasco Day? It sounds like you guys had your own fiasco. We did. We uh, we, we jumped right in, but we were on a Catalina 37. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and six well, of you're, us. Having, <laughs> you're having your own competition then. Yeah. I know. Um, but uh, gosh, it's Great been photo. just really, really cool to see how our members have been getting together on boats. Um, you know, I love winter sailing personally. It's um, a lot more relaxing than during the summertime when everything can pick up and start hitting 28 knots in the bay. Mm -hmm. Great to see you guys enjoying it and having a great time. And talking about being out on the bay, uh, we, since the last board meeting, uh, we've now had two Zoom events. We've had the, um, you know, the local weather on the Bay event. Uh, and then last night, Cammy's talk. Oh my God. How many of you guys were at Cammy's talk last night? It was so cool. Me. Julie, I can see you. Yes, that's great. Sherry, I know it was great seeing you there too. Far out. We had such a good time. Yeah, yeah Alice. Oh my gosh. How good was it? I mean, that was great. Huge credit to Melissa for pulling that together. Uh, Eric as well yeah. for coaching Cammy. Uh, I know that honestly, like, you know, especially Eric, I know you've put hours and hours into coaching our speakers. It's just been so essential. Thank you so very much. Um, Eric, I know you have a massive report to deliver during your section, but, um, you know, I am very curious to see what, what Cammy's next chapter is going to be like. It sounds like he wants to do more events like that, which to me is terrific. You know, I, I think he has a lot to share with the sailing community and how better to do it right now than via Zoom. So, Anyway, like 76 last night. So oh, it's 76. 77. Yeah, yeah 77. Think, yeah. Yeah, 77, but I think one of them was a dial in. So yeah. That's pretty cool. But it's mind blowing. Oh, 77 totally mind -blowing. people were there last night? 77. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. If you take out us, that puts us about 70 people attended. Mm -hmm. Oh my I'm gosh. Guessing. Yeah. Which is crazy good. And I know there were a handful of people that were basically paid to get the recording because they couldn't be there at that time. Uh, that recording's now been shared with everyone who made that purchase. So uh, hopefully they're happy. The feedback that's come in so far has been good fun. Like it's been great. We've got the enthusiasm was incredible. A lot of enthusiasm. Um, you know, it was just really, really terrific. I know that, you know, people were saving a lot of their comments until the end when we asked for Q&A and I was completely overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God, we have like nine questions here. How do I how do I uh, pick out the ones that are most useful uh, for everybody involved? So, you know, I just thought, thought it was a really fun interactive event and really got into it. So 
I think uh, at this point, it's yeah. only nine minutes past the hour. Let's get into <laughs> let's get into the meat of it, right? Where is so it? Listen, that was Harry, supposed to be. This? If you look at the hats, there's yeah. blue, red, and what was supposed to be gold, but that one blew overboard. So they were <laughs> supposed to be our yacht club colors, but it didn't Lanyard. work out that way. Lanyard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Where is David? He's not on. Hmm? Anybody heard? Oh, from David Shane. Yeah. Oh, actually, I did get a note of him. Yeah, let me have a quick look. Um, well, I can. I did get an Mark. email okay. earlier from him. So yeah. he said he can't find the call info. There are oh. no phone numbers. Uh, okay, so he needs the phone number. Um, I'll do uh, you text him. Yeah, could you kindly? Uh, yep. Yeah, that'll yeah, be going. really, really good. Um, so we'll skip to his report when he comes online. We thankfully have a lot to cover. Uh, so let's see. I'm just going to make sure that I send over the invite to him as well. Oh, gee, he wants the phone I'm doing details. It. Okay, we'll do thank we'll you. All right, it. thank you. Good. Go ahead. All right, perfect. So um, I'm going to call us all to order and ask if we will approve the minutes for January. Uh, thank you very much, Alice, for providing the minutes. Mm -hmm. We're all good. All right. Does anyone want to second that? Approve the minutes? Melissa, I see you. Well, somebody has to make a motion, not you, Ross, in order okay. to be able to approve the minutes. And then somebody second else seconds it, and then we all vote. Let's all right, Eric. If you move, I'll second. Okay. Okay, I'll do the first. Christina will do the second, and Great. then we vote. Perfect. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Should all raise our hands if we're all yep. in favor? Yep. yep. I'll remember how to do this one day. I promise you. Right. It'll you. all fall into place. It's all good. <laughs> and then you ask if there are any nays or any abstentions. All right. Any oh, and here's David. Or, and here is David. Yay. Perfect timing. Great. Any nays? Nope. All right, let's carry on then. So David is currently he's dispatching in. And whilst he's at it, I'm actually going to stop my share for a moment and then move over to the uh, financials. So that's all set up and ready to go. All right, come on, David. There we go. Ah, Mr. David Shea, how are you today? Oh, are you there? There he comes. Still getting in there. Here he comes. Here you're connecting to audio. Bear with us. There you go. Come on, mister. You can do it. All right. Actually, so whilst he's connecting to audio, uh, Melissa, do you want to just do a quick report on the weather webinars? Because it sure. looks like this is still going. I'm going to just stop sharing that for a second. Okay, Go ahead. that'd be great. All right, so um, you guys all know how the enthusiasm and what happened with the weather uh, seminar last night with Cami. it was amazing. I sent out a little memo last week saying we were at 84 and could we get to 100? And 84 people signed up for the weather series from the beginning to where we're at now. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that each one of them had signed up for all four. Some people just came on and signed up for one program. But mm -hmm. we had over 100 people, I think, by the time last night closed. And there were 27 people that signed up for just Tammy's program since um, in, in the last three weeks, basically. So, I mean, the enthusiasm was great. Uh, Nancy brought us Tammy, and that was just amazing. He was the perfect speaker um, to have, you know, in the middle of our program. And you do know that at the end of it, we'll add all the money that we've raised, which I think maybe I, I, I start seeing double when I start adding all this on Weebly, but I think it's close to $4,800, $4,900. And yep. we are going to take 25% of that, so close to $1,000, and give it to four nonprofits that each one of the speakers have chosen. And two of the... Um, Two of the speakers have chosen Alameda Community Sailing Center. So we'll be sending them a check for almost $500, which is so freaking amazing. And then one is for BADS, right? Um, Rick, uh, I think it was Rick who chose BADS. And then, no, no, it was Rick, it was Martin. It was Martin who That's chose right. Martin chose BADS. That's BADS. Right. And then Rick is yeah. Call of the Sea. So we have uh, three checks to write, and that's, that's just great. So 
Sherry, mm. thank you for being there and helping me with the marketing. Yeah. And when we got the year wrong, you helped make it right. And when we had the picture wrong, we got the right picture in there. And um, just so appreciate your efforts, your joy to work with. And you, you, you're so, um, you know, you, you come back with stuff quickly and, and, and it's great. So what a, what a great yeah. thing that we've done. You know, last year, like I said, we were doing diesel engines and we were doing um, how to buy a boat, but you know, we didn't have the amount of enthusiasm we have this year. So it's amazing. When does this wrap? What'd you say? When does this wrap? I mean, when, oh, when March, is 14, March 14. March 14 is the last one. And then one. When, do we, when do we pay out to the charities? At March 15th. So maybe uh, just as an idea, maybe we could um, turn into kind of an interesting in-person event attached to maybe the crab feed or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. You, you mean invite someone the from the, each organization to the craft? Yeah, team? whoever the stakeholder is at the organization, and we, um, you know, give out the checks there. You know, just kind of a, a little bit of a ceremony, maybe attach the crab feet or something like that, or even if it's what just something idea. in boathouse, depending on the conditions. That's just really idea. great. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. We were initially yeah. planning to, you know, the crab feed has been a bit of a floating date. Uh, initially, I was earmarking early April as being sort of like an end of uh, Island Days, like winter series, uh, awards night slash crew party slash general recognition for people. Um, we'll talk about that at that point in the agenda, but um, I am really, really hoping that we can have uh, around early April, an event where we can really celebrate all these, you know, these big moments we've had, including, uh, you know, basically, uh, giving the money that we've raised, which is a lot, to these various charities. So uh, fingers crossed right now. I really want to set March as being like the, the, the final, like, are we going to do this or not date for, uh, you know, these sort of in-person events that we hope to have in late March or April. Uh, but, you know, it's fingers crossed, everybody. Let's just get over this. Let's kick this bug. That's, that's really my hope. So it can make all this happen. Right. All right. Well, thank you well, very much, report. Melissa. You're welcome. Thank you. David, are you available <clears throat> now? Oh, Mr. David Shea. Got him on mute right now, uh, but he's here. Us unmute. Let's see if we can get him off. I'm here. Um, hey, unmute. good on you. Hey, I'm, you I'm here, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. Fantastic. I'm still trying to get used to all this stuff, but um, I, I was catching up on Melissa's um, comments and Melissa all I need to do is uh, or need is a um, detail as far as who gets what and wh and why so we can yep. go ahead and get those checks out I mm -hmm. um, think um, everybody got the uh, hopefully got the treasure support um, yep, you know I'll thank you to all, all the successful programs uh, the membership just keep on coming in I mean the, you guys are making my job a lot easier I'll be honest with you uh, we're financially solvent, as you can see, and uh, a couple of things coming up with respect to I'm um, still waiting on some uh, expense reimbursements. I think uh, Esther said we still owe her some money uh, in from the past experiences or past events and the Chase Boat Management uh, Maintenance Program. Uh, yep. I just need to know how much money we're looking at. But other than that, it, <laughs> it's getting a lot easier, guys, and we're just keep on growing. So I, I'm, I'm just I'm I'm delighted with with just the effort and just the uh, esprit de corps this whole group's got no question about it. Well, David, we really appreciate you too as well. Uh, you've done a fantastic job. Thank you so much for providing this report before the meeting. Uh, yeah, our we just go from strength to strength at this point, and it uh, is. you know, yeah, I, yeah. We're, we're, oh. we're, and again, especially with events, it's not a matter of surviving at this point. It's just how how much better, better we're going to get. Uh, you know, um, Eric has mm. been a, a really a, integral part of all this, and you have Ross yeah. and everybody else. Um, you know, uh, we're looking at uh, Blenna Bay. We're looking at Alameda Yacht Club. Uh, mm. You know, their weakness. And in the meantime, we just keep on growing our roots. And that's the best yeah. way to describe it. We're just growing our roots. That's it. We absolutely are. Thank you. All right. Uh, so... my, pleasure. Uh, my pleasure, guys. <laughs> Thank you. So it looks like next on the agenda uh, will be Eric, um, who, again, has been really part of this, this story going from strength to strength. Um, I Let's start off with the, the crab feed, I reckon, just because I feel like that's something we've been talking about uh, in recent times. Um, 
How are we going, Mr. Eric? Well, uh, so um, actually, Cindy and uh, uh, Ward can talk a little bit. We've talked uh, oh, yeah, quite a bit about the situation with the uh, crab feed. We're still in a little bit of a holding pattern. I don't know if everybody knows it or not, but the crab season's open till the end of July because it was so wow. late getting started. So um, yeah. seeing as how the COVID numbers, they haven't really, I, I know everybody's sort of ignoring it, but the COVID numbers haven't really dramatically improved. If anything, they've gotten worse. The death count is up um, mm. week over week for the last two weeks straight. And um, so we're still in a little bit of a holding pattern. I know uh, Bolina Bay is going to do theirs at the end of February. Um, and I think, Roz, we were going to sit down and really uh, talk it through. But I think we're looking at something in like March, realistically. No realistically. set dates, no commitments yet. Mm -hmm. um, but it's more a matter of what happens day by day by day. The uh, positivity mm -hmm. rate has dramatically declined, which is nice to see. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like the ICU capacity is beginning to decline as well. Um, mm -hmm. but I think to get the maximum impact out of it, and it's so much effort to put it on and put it on right, that, um, we are looking probably into March, I think is the that's, way to go, but that's for right now. Eric, I've got a question for you. And again, David mm -hmm. Shea on these guys, the national news has it basically California is coming off the mask mandate sometime next month. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Virginia's already yep. done it, Delaware, New Jersey. I think all the governors are saying, look. Everybody's got fatigue. Let's get on with our lives, kind of thing. Uh, hey, two questions. What are your feelings, or what are you all feeling about that? And secondly, what is your druthers as far as whether we do Bolina Bay or Alameda Yacht Club for the, for the event? Oh, I, I, I think it's, it's, it ultimately depends on their interest in working with us. And Bolina Bay has definitely expressed their interest. Mm -hmm. Alameda has yeah. also expressed Cindy their interest. And, and Ward, Several, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, Cindy and Ward are actually on the, the call tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, I so I, 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 I <laughs> they can't say, hi, Cindy, hi, Ward. I, I'd love to do it with them. Uh, they got a really nice facility. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing their own on February 26th, if I'm not mistaken, okay. for their, their members. So we'd have to, I think we're going to discuss, we're going to sit down and actually have a discussion around looking at partnerships and kind of moving forward on what we're going to do coming up here in the near future. Um, but as far as the, as the crab feed goes, we're still sort of sitting on our hands. At least I am. I've done a lot of preparation work around that, looking at how to get crab costs associated with it, um, as well as looking at different venues. Bolina Bay does have a beautiful facility. I've also mm -hmm. talked to the Masonic Lodge that's mm -hmm. there on yeah. Park Street. I've talked to uh, Aeolian Yacht Club. I've mm -hmm. talked to Alameda Yacht Club, um, mm -hmm. and there's actually a couple other feelers out there for Ensenel and um, Oakland as well. Um, I think it really ultimately boils down to us committing to a date and then starting the marketing piece to really get a good, clear yeah. picture. My estimates are based on previous um, information and kind of what we've been seeing as far as turnout is I think we'll be above our 2019 numbers because wow. our membership is significantly above what 2019 was if you look at it um okay. so right now with 170 households and continuing to grow beyond that um as we speak i think we might be looking at um a minimum of 150 people in in that um regard and we were pretty spot on for the um uh change of watch as far as numbers yeah. goes mm -hmm. based on projections so i mean that's just an educated i wouldn't even say an educated it's an uneducated guess of what we'd be yeah. looking at so, but it's going to take a lot of, it's going to be a groundswell effort to pull us off and make it happen uh, simply because all of our stuff is in the container up in Fairfield. So mm -hmm. we need to kind of figure out how that's going to work. And then um, uh, if we are going to do a crab feed with one of the, um, the other yacht clubs, we have to figure out the financial piece of it. So, cause that's a big, that's a big chunk of it. You know, it's a, it's a huge revenue source for us as far as keeping the club solvent and moving forward and being able to kind of work on some of our other projects. So uh, and we're still so working quick. that out. We're still hammering out those details. It's kind of putting the cart before the horse because until we really know when it changes the price of crab, it changes the venue, it changes everything all at once. Mm -hmm. I understand. Eric, a real quick question, question then. So, so yeah. should we just be talking about renting the facility for a flat fee? 
uh, from either club, and then um, you know all the all their members are invited, or do you see that as kind of a um, flat fee, but plus a uh, revenue sharing arrangement, or or is this something you still need to kind of work out? So when I talked with Ward about, and, and Ward can confirm this, what their mm-hmm. membership kind of came up with, I think the, the fair answer is, because we're going to be much larger wherever the venue is that we put the event on. We're going to be significantly larger than exactly. their own audience right. that they'll be doing it. So I, the fair thing that makes sense to me, and I think they were still working out the bugs on their end, is they keep the bar revenue. We keep the revenue from each one of our own sales. So say if there's... 100 tickets sold and 70 of them are our members. We take 70% of the profits as well as um, 70% of the expenses. They take 30% of the profits as well as 30% of the expenses. And then all of the bar revenue would go to them sort of as rent for the facility. Unless, of course, we figure out some other sort of details um, before then. Um, but how does it work that if, seems if we're that, putting all the crab, we're, we're, putting, we're putting all the food on the table, how's that going to work if we have revenue sharing? I mean, in other words, if, if we're buying, if we're coming up with all the money to buy all the food, why would we do a revenue sharing for anything other than the bar, the bar sales? Well, good point, David. You know, I, what I would expect that we would do is again, in my example, where we had a hundred tickets, we sold 70 of the tickets. They sold 30 of the tickets. They would share in the expenses. They would pick up the 30% of the, you know, we would take the 70% of it, obviously. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I think that's based on what the club's comfort level is. And obviously they need to make it um, appropriate right. for them. They're not going to uh, do it for free or anything like that. They've got expenses to just keep the doors open. I said, uh, what I'd like to do, and I'm looking at uh, Cindy and Ward right now in their picture. Hey, Ward, if I could, uh, if if we go forward with with the club, if I could get with your treasurer, I think we'll work out an arrangement that would be very suitable for both groups. Um, look, we're coming up with the money to to uh, put the craft feed on. Obviously, you need the traffic. Uh, I think we can work for uh, make it work for both groups. Groups, both groups. Yeah, no, that that would be great, and I know that Monica would be. Uh, you know, more than uh, more than willing to work one on one with you on all the details as, as the rest of us work on on other things. You know, we're we're exploring. We're pretty flexible. But, uh, okay. Yeah, Monica would be thrilled to to get with you. Right. The, the, the only what concern the I have, only, only challenge I have, or concern I have, uh, Ward. Last time I was there, there wasn't a lot of tables. We'd have to bring in, I think, some tables because right now. Whoever it was set up for sort of a lounge uh, set up. Uh, we, we will need, we're going to need to feed a lot of people. And uh, I hope uh, um, uh, Monica, your, your treasurer, will help. Will uh, work with us on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, absolutely. There will be a lot of details to a lot of details to work out. But we've got a team, uh, Cindy and myself, sort of because we're also members of, of Island and have you know been associated exactly. with Island for a long time. Um, but also right. our, our rear commodore, Colin Spear, uh, has been very involved in, in noodling things out. We've got support from the whole board. And again, um, you know, there are a lot of details to work out, but Monica will be uh, great to have involved in that. Okay. Uh, 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 Eric is our point man, obviously. And, uh, you know, uh, but uh, look, uh, all I, I just need someone to tell me what I'm supposed to do and I'll, I'll work with your treasure best I can. Great. You're supposed to show up, David. <laughs> uh, no, I will. That's what I'm trying yeah. to figure out when you guys are going to have it, man. That's my whole point. <laughs> oh, dancing on the table. Look, Cindy, Cindy is, is one of our legacy members, and, and Ward is just – both of them are legacy members. Uh, you know, I, I just want to see this the synergy keep on working here. That's all. Thanks, David. And I think legacy means old. <laughs> Thank you very much. I like that word better. <laughs> no, I didn't say old. I said legacy. I didn't say old. I said yeah. legacy. <laughs> we go back a ways. We we go back for you know long time. Uh, yeah. We, we need to keep we need to keep the flames burning here. That's all. Yeah. And Cindy and Ward, I'm so happy that you're here. I mean, seriously, the, the fact that you guys are continuing. I'm gonna try and choose a word that's not old or legacy. Um <laughs> continuing the I want to see spirit. <laughs> no, that's even worse. Come on, oh, Eric. It's a whole lot of word. It's basically it's it's basically honoring the history now? and and the yeah. continuation of, of honor and uh, and uh, just 
pure respect, and and that it, this is not meant to be uh, disrespectful at all. And Cindy okay. knows what oh, it wasn't talking. meant that way, David. Thank you very much. No, and no, I, and you, guys knows we're talking. Stuck, you guys are stuck <laughs> with this. I made this commitment. Um, I met Ward. 14 years ago, 2008, um, April 5th or something, at a party of Don Chesney's 50th birthday. No, it's, yeah. oh. And I yeah. I've made that commitment that as long as we're alive and still together and you guys are there, we will always be members of Island Yacht Club because it's a great it. club. Thank you. And, and Thank yet, you very you know much. You know what, Cindy, we're blessed with having some great members come in like Ross and Eric and the, the, the new blood coming in. I've told, I've told these two these several times. We're so blessed to have such great people come in and kind of take up from where we are. I, I love them. And they're just, it's, that's what makes the club what it is right now. Julie Thank McKay you, David. says we're the wisdom members. The wisdom that. members. The wisdom yes. members. Yes. Yeah, the wisdom. That's right. <laughs> not, not to be confused with teeth. <laughs> very good oh my gosh well talking about the uh oh actually no before we move on um from you eric in particular can you indulge there's us a little a bit pieces, with, too. yeah there's a few things going on eric so i i was curious about your uh recent visit to the iyc storage container which i think deserves yeah. legacy status um and what do you believe to be the path going forward from here in regards to making sure that we either do things like give tables, ta-da, to Ballina Bay or wherever our crab feed venue is, and making sure that everything just goes to a good home, really. All oh, right, that's so, a that's a cool pick. <laughs> oh, gee. So I will, my <laughs> my position and feeling around the contents of the container have dramatically shifted. Okay. And um, and actually, Nancy was the one that started my thoughts around this. The container mm -hmm. is literally a yacht club ready to go. I mean, it, it's it, it's it's a mess, and it needs some time and effort to get it cleaned up. But looking at everything that's in there, if you look at what Monique is sitting on, that's a stack of about a dozen tables. Each one of those tables, if we want to go buy on their eight footers, are like a hundred dollars a piece. Oh. Um, so, you know, we're spending $100 a month, and yes, it's $100 a month, and if we add that up by the point we finally get a facility, um, that adds up, without a doubt. But if you look at everything else that's in there, there's a lot in there. There's some stuff that we could simply take out of there. Sherry had a really good idea when we were sitting there talking to, uh, uh, I'm kind of blanking out on his name. Len? Uh, Jamie, Jamie, when oh, we were talking Jamie. to Jamie. So Jamie was there, Jamie, was, Jamie met us at the container. We went up there, we were there for, what would you say guys, like a couple hours at least. We found literally mm -hmm. everything that we had been looking for. I found the ship's bells, found all of the awards. We have all the award cups. In other words, we have every single one of the awards cups. I think there's oh. at least 10 dozen maybe. I haven't gone to count them. Wow. Uh, we found some other kind of neat signage. Um, the original uh, club, Burgie. There's a lot of history there. There's a lot of um, useful and valuable pieces in there. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it, but, um, and we can certainly kind of talk about this more, but I think we really should think very, very carefully if we want to really dispose of it. Simply because if we do at some point have a venue, we are going to have to buy upfront all these costs to do, to buy all these items. And some of the stuff in here, specifically like the tables and chairs are useful mm -hmm. at, whatever wherever we go now if we mm -hmm. put them on like crab feet. yeah exactly. that's what i'm thinking yeah i mean yeah. if we put uh -huh. them on like permanent loan or something like that it's not nearly as far as i thought it was it's west texas so it's under an hour from point to point to get there and to even think about storing the that stuff somewhere locally we're at so much more money but sherry was the one that actually mentioned it uh talking to jamie is maybe we can get glenn to donate it to us and that kind of makes it a little bit simpler, a little bit easier for us to keep it for a little bit longer. One of the things I can definitely see that we would benefit from is so Sherry's actually sitting on two old refrigerators. Those are worthless to us. There's also a big giant glass table. But if we went through and actually organized it and took a little bit of time and sorted through it, got rid of some of the garbage that's in there, and that might be a weekend work project, that would be a usable space. 
that would be valuable product that we'd be able to actually use for these events we're talking about doing on a quarterly basis. And it's truthfully not that far to go to get to it. So. Oh, um, Shelly, by her name. <laughs> it's not, it's not Sherry, it's Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Don't you know who you're out with? <laughs> hey, hey then, Eric, I got a question for you. Is talking? it possible to find maybe one of the clubs like over at Bolina Bay where, where maybe they have a storage room we can we can um, put the stuff that actually is usable and maybe we pay them the uh, fees instead of Glenn? Because Glenn's not hadn't been a member for years. Well, Glenn wants yeah. us out at the end of June anyway. So that is that's right. right to remember. So, so can we can that. we kind of may, maybe change gears and say, look, by the way, Monique looks great on those tables, but I don't think we should uh, throw them out. Let's whatever's salvageable. Let's see if we can ward. Could, could you get a place for us to store the stuff or maybe we go to one of the other yacht clubs and say, look, we got some stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll pay you rent for, for, for just using your room that you're not using right now. We don't have an actual storage room, um, but I can explore what we can. We've got some things to move around and a few things to get rid of as well. Um, so we, we, we can look into that, but I, I wouldn't want to make any promises because we're a little, a little bit tight. Uh, there was a lot of loungy furniture moved in that we're not quite sure what to do with. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and the other <laughs> thing is we, we, so need to, we need to have the stuff closer to where we are rather than up there in Fairfield. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But agree. The, the thing I will tell you, if you look at the amount of material that's in there, that container is packed. It's I mean, packed, packed. packed. Mm -hmm. So we literally mm -hmm. had to pull out uh, the back half of it. And some of it, truthfully, was just straight garbage. I was like, why in the world do we ever keep this? But mm -hmm. there's a full commercial stove in there. Mm -hmm. There's, sure um, you know, multiple mm -hmm. refrigerators, and those are sort of questionable. But a lot of the other stuff in there actually yeah. is, um, it's not just mm -hmm. junk that we should pitch, especially the tables and chairs. I was just, you know, I went looking online when I got back. There's some money in those tables and chairs, and they're not cheap to rent. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. My kind of yeah, thought but, process on it changes, but, but, but I didn't realize that we have to be out in June. Mm -hmm. But what yeah. is Shelly sitting on? Shelly, what are you sitting on? She's on a two, the two refrigerators. Think, yeah, there's That's coolers, a ref refrigerators. There's a, I mean, one thought I had too was, you know, we've been hanging out at Boathouse Tavern. We've been doing our awards things there. And you know, it's our mock clubhouse. I don't know if Christian has any use for these as a temporary measure. He's the new owner of Boathouse. Um, that was one thought, and I think Roz was going to, maybe we were going to talk to Monique since she's friends with him. Uh, yeah, mini fridge, there's a wine fridge, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff there's in there. There's so, a, mini, a mini fridge? <laughs> yeah, and a, and a wine fridge as well, a wine cooler. Um, wow. And, yeah, I mean, I agree there. That's a great picture, something. by the way. I don't know if, um, yeah, one thought is to, <laughs> I know, I'll take the wine fridge too. We can fight over it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, one that I had was like, maybe talk to Boathouse Tavern guys. They don't have a lot of space, but they're opening uh, and they're doing more stuff. So, and we have been using their venue a bit. So that's one one avenue too. And if, if we can't find a yacht club that wants it to store for us. Um, anyway, that was my thoughts. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Great. So um, before uh, I open up to more comments, a few things that I just uh, picked up this week. Uh, it sounds like Boathouse Tavern, they're going to be starting food service soon. Shelly, I know we spoke about potentially offering, uh, and this could be a permanent loan situation, some of these furniture items to Boathouse Tavern. Uh, that's something that we can approach them about on Sunday, I take it. Shelly, if you're, I know you're about to go to Utah, so I was going to say, but could you- Monique. But Monique's yeah. like been hanging out with the owners. So. Okay, so Monique, I'm wondering, is that something <laughs> that uh, you could discuss with the owners uh, in regards to whether or not they would be interested in some of these food service items? Oh, sorry, Hi. Monique. Did... Hi. Sorry, can you hear me, Hal? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Hey, Monique. I'll talk to, uh, hi. I'll talk to um, the new owner about it. Um, I can send them an email and chat with them. That is amazing. Thank you so very much. Yeah. And then yeah. also, uh, Julie, you mentioned that you could be interested in some of the fridges, a couple of items like that. One fridge. One we fridge, one fridge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very good. Okay. 
Um, so that is, this is super cool. Um, I'm thinking as far as next steps, this probably will be a multi-weekend project. It sounds like one project is going to be taking and disposing or giving away the bulky items like fridge, uh, things like a glass table. I honestly, uh, you know, we have to really just make a call whether or not we can extract value from that. I mean, my understanding is this, all these items are in a locked, locked shipping container in a locked area and not everybody is going to feel like driving up to Fairfield for the sake of Craig's listing. So, um, you know, really things are only worth as much as we're able to actually get money out of them. Um, Julie, that's why I'm, I'd be thrilled if you could come and join us on that, that first day and help us uh, unpack some of these bulkier items. Uh, what day is that again? We don't have a date in the calendar okay. just yet. We have been pushing it out because of this whole Omicron concern. We haven't really wanted to have people packed into a container if we feel like, you know, this is, the virus is still wandering around. So um, I think that's something we'll all have to, Alice, if you don't mind adding to the minutes, um, we should really discuss offline what the what date works best for our team as we should probably sit down and just like create a doodle or something like that just to find out what dates people are available. Great. Um, Nancy, I'm sorry, I, I was pushing your comment out a long way there. You said that uh, you were looking at uh, a venue, but you believe it's now closed. Did you have any other comments that you wanted to add as well? Oh, I'm sorry, you're on mute, Nancy. Okay. Uh, when I wrote that initially, I didn't realize it was closed, but I looked up on my phone while we were while we were getting to this point, and it has a big thing that is permanently closed. Okay. Which is too bad because that's a nice place. Yeah. All right. So, and yes, I saw your comment there about bringing back the ship bell. Uh, that's something I you have should. Have both of them. Eric, Eric. Yep. Good. I have Eric. both of them. So there's two of them. There's two big okay. bells. I have both Thank of them. I'll bring them to Boathouse. Thanks to the people that actually labeled boxes. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Thank it helped. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you very much, all of you guys, for doing that. I know it's tough and dirty work. Uh, I really, really appreciate you going off to Fairfield and doing that sort of initial reconnaissance. Um, that gives us a lot of information as well for when we do put a date in the calendar, uh, what kind of vehicles we should bring up. I'm very much of the opinion that we should uh, pull together, together some budget for a U-Haul so we can dispose of the, the bulky items and that'll just make access easier in the future. Uh, I looked into getting a U-Haul and it's probably gonna cost us about $250 for that day if we also include things like dollies and stuff like that. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind that um, we will end up spending inevitably a few hundred dollars to empty out the container. What are we going right. to do with it, Roz? What are we going to do? Well, I mean, you probably have a better idea, but my impression is that we should start sending out emails to, for instance, Boathouse Tavern, uh, Delta Yacht Clubs, like Alice mentioned, uh, to see if they would be interested in these galley items. I think that if we can set to have that done um, by you know, sometime in the next week, that would be great. My idea on this is that we should really have thoughts together as to what we can earmark for uh, giving to people versus tossing by the end of the month. Uh, I think we really need to push this event into March, at least our initial foray into you know, disposing of things versus keeping things. But at least by then, we should have some sort of idea of like, okay, the tables will go to Boathouse or they'll go to a Delphi Yacht Club versus throwing away. Um, my impression is, unfortunately, you know, speaking to Glenn, he, to second what Melissa said, it sounds like he's not making any money off this. He would rather just have us move on. Um, I'd be more than happy to have that chapter behind us anyway. Uh, we should really Agreed. just focus on, yeah, I think we should really just focus on keeping and maintaining the legacy items, things like trophies and things like that. Galley items, we will try to give a good home and try to get money out of them. But I think that we should be willing to accept that if we cannot find a good home for them, they will have to go. Um, I mean, that's the thing. We don't really have a date in the calendar for when we are going to have a permanent location, right? So, um, you know, 
what else can we do otherwise if we can't find a home for those items by the end of the month? Uh, um, hey, Eric, I got a question for you. So are you saying we spent all this money just to store junk? There is some junk no, money. that's that's kind of the exact opposite, to be honest with you. I expected mm -hmm. to see a bunch of just garbage and at the very <laughs> back of the container, at the very back of the container, no question about it, there were like these old mm -hmm. bar stools that looked like they deserved to be in the garbage. But as soon as you started looking through it and we went all the way to the very front of the container, you start seeing that it wasn't just junk. I mean, it's, um, you know, the thing that really sucks about it is if we had a venue, it's literally a drop in ready to go, everything ready to start doing parties and having the whole shebang. That's yeah, what that kind of gives the tension the when they packed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, Jamie's it a bit of a hoarder, so that stuff was added. Yeah, and there, there is some stuff in there, like I said, could probably weed it out by half and make it into a usable space. But if Glenn wants us out, that eliminates that as a possibility. It's not nearly as far as I thought it was. We were up there in a blink of an eye. Um, but again, if Glenn wants us out, then we kind of don't really have any choice there. But the, yeah. the thing it thinks about it is just the simple cost. Most of it has no value as it is. It's the replacement cost that we'd be looking for up front that's mm -hmm. going to hit us pretty hard when the time comes. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, but, yeah. that's the way I understood yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, Thank it is a tricky but, thing yeah, because... Um, I think a I lot of say, that stuff... Go ahead, sorry. I just want to say quickly that if in a, the foreseeable future we do end up joining forces with another community organization or a yacht club potentially, they'll have a lot of that stuff too. So that's where the replacement cost issue becomes a, you know, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. Like I wonder, you know, if we come to a, any sort of relationship saying you guys have a clubhouse and we have, you know, two dozen bar stools, like they'll be like, what are we, what are we gonna do with that? <laughs> Well, the only thing I would say to that, and the only suggestion I have around that is mm. maybe a further conversation with Eileen of what realistically are time frames. They are, mm -hmm. if you haven't been to the, well, you haven't been to the marina because you haven't been around, the dock still remains and the dock uh -huh. is not going anywhere. And that leads me to believe that there's going to be a structure at that dock. So uh, Pier 3, where my boat is, that dock is not going anywhere. There's now a 70 foot long accessible hallelujah mm -hmm. for miss christina um uh ramp so you can actually goes from where the bathrooms were all the way down 70 foot long it's nice straight easy access um so we can actually get down to the uh ramp without um some of the challenges that we've had in the past with getting her down so yes. but in front of that is still the dock or our deck is there so that tells me that there's going to be a structure nearby if you look at all of their um marking materials that they have online there is a structure there that looks very similar to our old yacht club so that's the only thing that kind of comes into my mind is maybe it's worth a conversation to eileen is hey is that going to be for us or are we going to be able to use that and if it is then i think we should try and see if maybe glenn will let us hold it for a little bit longer i don't know i don't think yeah, but that's why I was asking Ward if maybe um, they might have a, a room that's maybe uh, 10 by 10, that, but the stuff that we can really use, hey, look, it's going to be air conditioned, heated, and and taken care of. We don't mind paying for renting the space, trying to find some place where we can put the stuff that's really valuable to us and then uh, get rid jettison the other stuff that's not valuable. Mm. Uh, but i, I got to rely, rely on Ward to come to help me with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will um, actually. I'll be over at the club tomorrow. In in our main clubhouse, I think even ten by ten right now would be a bit tough to come up with. Okay. Although I'm getting a couple ideas, but we do also rent some storage space on the second floor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have no idea right now how cubed out that is. So a lot of things mm -hmm. were thrown out that probably actually shouldn't have been, but that's another long story. Mm -hmm. So let me look into that. Um, mm -hmm. see if I can get into that storage area um, and uh, I'll have a better idea if, you know, and a number like 10 by 10 helps me. That gives me something to work with. Uh, I Great. think Eric, I mean, I think that would work 10 by 10 for, for, for the legacy stuff. 
Yeah, and I mean, we can, I, between everybody's space, I'm sure if we get an inventory of everything, we can kind of figure out where to kind of spread it out and, and it might fill be it. on top I of just, each other, but at least we got it. It's stored away. It's been air conditioned, heated, and and right now it's an environment in the elements in a steel container. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. Everything looked good. Everything was packed mm -hmm. well. Nothing looked like it got damaged or anything. Yeah, uh, that's what I, yeah. I expected to see a complete disaster okay. when we, we walked into it. We pulled it open, and after you pulled out the initial stuff in the back, I mean, was it fair to say there, Shelly? It, was, it wasn't, I didn't see it as that all no. that bad. It, was, it wasn't too organized, obviously. Right. So we found trophies in, not trophies, um, the trophy cups in one section, which is completely unrelated to where we found the rest of them. Um, okay. So that's why I'm saying is we need to go through there and weed out, and we could probably weed out a good 25% of what's in there. The rest of it would be, like I said, if we have a venue, it's just stuff we're going to have to buy down the road. And I, you know, yeah, don't be I don't so know. Quick to throw things out. Mm -hmm. That's mm. that's that's what I'm thinking. And but again, we have an expense. I mean, if we're going to spend a bunch of money to store it, it's just going to end up being expenses that we're throwing in the garbage. But having said that, is some of the things like the stove and some of the other stuff are very expensive to buy mm -hmm. outright. I mean, we're talking the replacement cost is going to be a primitive, primitive. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think Jamie took a toilet. I'm, I'm not quite sure that's still in there. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that in yeah. there. No, well, yeah. maybe we got but, rid of that. Uh, we saw a lot already. of it. cleaning supplies. I mean, it was, yeah, there was some stuff that yeah. does not need to be stored. Cleaning supplies. Really? Yes. Yeah. Why would they? Why would they pack up cleaning supplies? I I gave it, it all went. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the bathroom yeah, sink, whatever cans, they could take. Ice they chests. Can. I mean, yeah, it was literally this, anything and everything that was in there. The, there was like, all right, yeah, all garbage. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's put a pin in it, Nancy. Sorry, I'm sorry that uh, it sounds like uh, your time here is uh, finishing up. You've got another meeting. Do you want to add any additional comments before you leave? Um, no, I, I, I wanted to make sure that we got that Chappelle back. That was my main concern. Okay, got so, it. Um, I've got it. And there's, I have it in my personal possession. There's actually two bells in there. Okay. And I will bring All it right. to Boathouse Tavern so we can ring awesome. it for the first okay, time. Well, I'm just glad to know where they are. Um, so when we need them, we, we can grab them from you. And, and there's a um, whole bunch of other stuff in there too. Some picture. I, you know, we didn't really have a very clear um inventory of what people were looking for so i knew the bells was one of the things and the awards was the main reason i went up there because we haven't been able to get out anything for the last few races mm -hmm. but if um you know i think like i said a little bit of reshuffling we can get through everything that's in there sounds great thank you all right well thank you very much uh let's move on to the next report then uh christina uh can you tell us a little bit about the racing both previous and we've got also this weekend which i'm excited about yeah i have about an hour and a half report to give so i hope you guys oh, all geez. are ready for, <laughs> um, <laughs> sit tight grab your drinks and uh, yeah, i'm ready i'm ready <laughs> just kidding just kidding um yeah so last uh Oh my God, no, let me see. So yeah, last month, I feel like we already talked about it, but we, yeah, it was a great light wind day. Everyone had fun or I had fun. So I think everyone had fun. Um, mm -hmm. And so we have our next race this Sunday. Um, Valentine's Day, be, you know, is coming up next. It'll be Super Bowl. <laughs> That's me working hard. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. I, like Eric was awesome enough to take me out and I just sat there and looked at pretty boats which is my main um hobby these days um but yeah <laughs> so we so we have the next race this weekend we'll be at 800 dock um anybody mm -hmm. who's wanting or willing to help out with race committee should come on down around noon make mm -hmm. your way to the entire dock 800 <laughs> um and we yeah or email me if you have any questions about race committee um we're looking to train up folks for different positions. We have a few key folks, obviously Esther being one of them. We can't do anything without Esther really. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, but yeah, if anyone's willing and able and interested in doing race committee, we're, look, we're looking for you. Um, so that'll be this weekend. And then we have one more um, Highland Days race in March. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're super excited to be putting together the double-handed light ship um mm. 
-hmm. raised on April 2nd. And good news there is that we will be running that off of Golden Gate Yacht Club's race deck. Um, they've agreed to help us out there. So that'll be awesome. Um, yeah, it'll be good. Um, so that's looking okay. up. So um, Lloyd, who I don't think has joined just yet. I'm not sure. Um, I don't want to speak for him, but he's working on the SIs and um, and the notice of race for that. Um, and we're just really excited. That should be really fun. And then we're just looking at a few other things down the road, um, but, you know, kind of gearing up for our Island Nights series um, and generally just excited to have new blood in the race committee coming in, um, in addition to our um, our uh, our super reliable race committee folks who have been doing it for a while who know what they're doing and can teach the newbies so um yeah i mean i think that's most of what i have to report i have a i have a comment question yeah um for you all i guess um so the mm -hmm. pickia i'm probably saying that wrong the mm -hmm. unity parade around treasure island is on oh, wow the yeah and i'm wondering like it would be super fun to have some island yacht clubby folks um could, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, Shelly, if you're available, but it'd be cool to get Island Girl out there, maybe. What day is it? It's Saturday, the 19th of February. Oh, uh, oh wow. I'll check okay. my racing schedule. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, but it, anyway, so I think anyone with, with a boat, um, it'd be fun to have some Island Yacht mm. Club folks in that. I'm going to do, I will be doing that. Um, Raw saw me last year. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll be in a little, I'll do, I'm going to do a solo sail a dinghy awesome. um for that but that'll be fun um oh, and then my yeah. other raft up after oh that'll yeah. be super fun yeah oh my gosh i have to say i love the unity parade it is terrific it was so uh, fun just, again, last year right it was so much fun again i'm like shelly i've got to double check the racing calendar but i'm not you know, seeing it anything look like i think we're good <laughs> i think we're good there's a there's a race on sunday but saturday yep. is wide open so yeah, let's do it. it. Let's get the word out. That's yeah. awesome. I'm totally all about that. I'll set up a rental <laughs> page like last time. I'm, I'm like re really the, good. the worst rear Commodore ever. I'm like, racing's great, you guys, but let's do some cruising and rafting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about it. Uh, I'm 100%. Your energy, Christina. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then the other thing I was going to say is like, um, so Bads did a pretty cool crabbing event last weekend, which was mm. like remarkably successful. We went out mm. to Point Bonita and did some, we never had gone crabbing before, but we totally dropped some crab pots, then went out to Lightship and that while we were waiting for the crabs to get in our little traps. Mm. Um, and it was super fun. Cool. So like, I'm just putting that on the, like, I'm just idea bombing you guys, I guess, with like, Maybe we could consider some. I know the crab beat's kind of a different, more social event where we sit and we get large amounts of crab from a commercial source and we sit down and have a cool social event. But that may be another thing to think about as far as like a more COVID friendly people going out on boats kind of um, thing. So anyway, those are my non-race comments from my rear Commodore report. <laughs> What'd you go out it. on? I, we went out on our brand new Beneteau 41. Um, oh, wow. it, it was a rough, it was a tough time. We suffered through it though. Um, <laughs> Did you sail out and back or you were just hanging out? So we, we sailed it. We sailed it. Um, we will wow, like, cool. we had to motor. we left at eight in the morning. So we were motoring for the, for, the until we got out the gate basically. But then once we were out the gate, there was like great, like 12 to 15 knots steady. Wow. And it was beautiful out there. Amazing. Well, I most love importantly, it. how many crabs? So you'll be surprised because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> we got like, um, so, you know, like, so we got about 10. Wow. Which we only put two pots down. How many pots? So oh we, my God. So we got, um, put we put two, two pots, pots down, down and one of our pots was totally wow. unsuccessful. They were too small to keep legally. But the second one got like, we got like 15 in there. And then a few of them, like five of them were too small. So 10 legal crabs that we were able to take back. And like, wow. we had to like, wow. Very yeah, cool. we felt very proud of ourselves. We we're like, yeah, oh my god, it works. <laughs> oh my gosh, we totally need to do this. This is wouldn't that awesome. be fun? Thank I mean, because it was a very, very salty adventure. Like we were just like, yeah. it was super fun. Um, and we only had the one boat go out. Um, but it was like seven of us. Yeah, um, and it was it was really really fun. We saw another. We saw a South Beach Yacht Club member out there. They didn't get any yeah. crabs, but um. 
So it's it's kind of hit or miss, but um, or it sounds like. But anyway, that was my fun adventure that I thought I'd share with you guys. Totally not yeah. racing related, but um, fun fun times on the water for sure, and something that could be cool. Yeah, Thank thanks Christina. for sharing. What yeah. Was, yeah. What were the water conditions like? So really mild swells, like pretty. I mean, like we were, you know, we kind of went around and through ish the potato patch, um, but like you know, pretty. There were big swells, but they were spaced out in a way that wasn't too crazy. Unreal. Oh, that's good. That's so awesome. Yeah. It was, oh my gosh. It was really nice. It was, I mean, you, I don't think we could have asked for better conditions to because we hit, like, we went out to the light ship, like, when we got out there really fast. So, mm. anyway, that was cool. Yeah. Um, you all should come this Sunday. It's going to be so much fun. We have Super Bowl. We have, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be sailing on free to be on Sunday. Rough life you have, Alice. I'll have to wave at you guys. Okay. Yeah, you will. <laughs> uh, hey, Christina. Okay, well, yeah. As, uh, do we need anything? Has anybody commented that we need anything for race dock or we're missing anything? Or So I was talking to Lloyd about that in terms of just like forward looking, like budget wise, like what, you know, like just supplies. So he said, you know, like signal horns, like eventually will need to be replaced, but we're good now. He um, once like as far as race committee goes, we're looking at trying to kind of hit, like pin like two two people, like one person to be sure to like be basically kind of be in charge of like getting to the chase boat, the whaler, making sure everything there is good to go for the day. And then another person who would be charge of like, in charge of like making sure the flags are in the right place, ready to go for the day. So kind of equipment managers, if you will, as part of our race committee on an ongoing basis. Um, hmm. But for the time being, we're like my understanding from Lloyd, at least, is that we're okay on supplies, but we should probably budget in the future for um, signal horns as that's a um, consumable that we would go through. The other item that he would like to get a few copies of, which I think is a small budgetary item, um, and I just wanted to price it out, but it's um, a U.S. sailing book that's joined the race committee. And he's been giving that out to new race committee folks to kind of give them a, a resource guide. Um, not necessary for every single person to have one on their bookshelf, but again, really useful for us as a yacht club who's building a race committee to have on hand to provide to, to excited and interested new members. So um, those good. are the items that we discussed um, as potential Perfect. budget. But nothing's, so nothing's, nothing's missing then. We're good, nothing. we're good for Sunday. My, my understanding is Perfect. we're good for Sunday. Great, I love it. Thank you very much. Yes, and I just have to mention as well, I know that we were talking about a formal budget for race committee to cover things like training and new volunteers, yes. making sure that they do the US sailing accreditation. I love that. Um, let's talk about that offline, uh, especially when we have Lloyd, uh, so we can talk about what that looks like for the quarters ahead. Yeah, we figured, yeah, Lloyd and I talked about that and kind of figured like, we'll wait for you guys to get back and kind of do that as like a mm -hmm. kind of that's some boltsy thing, um, but definitely it's on it's on our minds for sure. Yeah, one thing we need to make sure of is that we have enough buoys because whoever picked up the buoys left one, Mark Four, I think it was in Encinal Basin. I was rowing the next weekend. I saw it there, and I went back the next day to get it, and it was gone. So, uh oh, um, we right. need to make sure we have enough buoys, and we need to train whoever is picking up the buoys to, to get them all. <laughs> yeah, good point. Definitely. I, yeah. made okay. a, um, I made a laminated map that's in the, um, the toolbox that maybe mm -hmm. we should staple or somehow adhere to the bench so people can see it as they go around. Might not be a yeah. bad idea. I think that's a great idea actually. Um, follow it under the things that we're going to do when we clean up that Boston Whaler, uh, definitely make sure we have things like course map. Mm. Speaking of which, we should print out a bunch of extras and race committee should have them in case people swing by during mm -hmm. the race and say, I, would, I need a race course. So, yep, that's a good idea. Idea. it's a good idea. All right, let's keep moving on. Um, I do want to wrap this up in 90 minutes. So we've got a bit less than 30 minutes to go. So a few more reports before we move on to the next things. Um, Shelly, I told Any... you I'd put you on the, or should I call you, should I call you Sherry now? Um, Please don't no, let's, not, let's not confuse, I want to be respectful to our Sherry here. So yeah. I mean, oh my goodness gracious. Um, so tell me about memberships. You've kicked off this awesome drive, but before we talk about that, 
how are we going for membership household numbers right now? That's a good question. I'm still figuring out the reports that you put together and then the doubles that are coming through. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. basically, based on the list that we talked about this week, um, I sent out about oh, 70 some emails this week and um, some I added pictures to and <laughs> some I added personal notes to if I knew them and really just sort and sh short and sweet. Like, mm -hmm. hey, it's time to renew. Um, you know, here's the link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just say you know 50 bucks and we got a really good response so that yeah. um, it's really great yeah so i want to say about 25 and i started mm -hmm. the emails a week ago so that was pretty good um and mm. it's been off and on i haven't been doing them every day so uh but i think i did get through the list and i had a little confusion about people that signed up at wss not yeah. realizing like theirs went over because they ended up on the wrong list and stuff like that. So now I have to kind of go back and apologize to a few people that were like, no, I paid. Um, not that people are cranky at all. Okay. <laughs> people are just like, you know, I'll yeah, pay you okay. again, but I think I paid. Um, so yeah, so then kind of the next step, but I do think we have some new members too. And I think that's because of the flyers mm -hmm. that were made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we did the OYC race on Sunday and we met one of our new members, Jerry. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, no, Christine, so far I'm good. I, I want to give it a couple weeks before I do another, uh, email blast. Like, let's give people a chance to catch up. Um, I think what probably would be better uh, use of our resources is using that flyer and kind of getting it out in social media to be like 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah, yep. we, I, I told Roz this story, but Monique and I had a funny experience at EYC the other night after the OYC race. We were having a, a we we're getting drinks at the bar. This guy Jerry's like, "Oh yeah, I just joined OYC," and we we're like, "Yay, we're OYC!" And literally, an older woman that was EYC booed us and was like, "Boo, boo!" And we're like, "Really, really?" Uh. <laughs> and I mean, she might have been drunk, so whatever. I'm gonna drink it just, but it was just like are we in fifth grade? <laughs> um, but that was great. And, you know, we let them know. And I, I, I kind of feel like the members are definitely doing a push on getting the word out. I think flyers are great. I could not figure out um, somebody more social media savvy than me, how to turn that flyer into something that I can post on social media. So maybe Raz or Monique could figure that out for me because mm -hmm. it was yep. too big and I couldn't compress it and blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty good right now. I want to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. I was mm -hmm. lucky enough that I'm between jobs right now. Um, and mm -hmm. I have another, I have another 10 days. Woo. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I had time. Um, so that was nice. And then yeah, I think it's good. So um, yeah, so that's been good. And then yeah, I've been playing on Island Girl every chance I can get, as you guys have seen. Um, Eric has been an awesome teacher. So at some point when we have a meeting about Island Girl and Small Boat Program, we definitely have some ideas on how to pitch it to people and get more people signed out on it. And I know when Roz comes back, I'll be gone, but then I'll be back next week. So, and then I have one more week before I start work again. Yeah. So just, I want to highlight <laughs> Shelly's impact here. Uh, when we had our January board meeting, we had about 120, I think it was 122 member households. We're now up to about 145. Yeah. So when you say 20 something, yeah, that's, that's a hundred percent what, you know, you've basically driven through uh, the outreach we've done to LAPS members. It's fantastic. I can see Chris clapping here. Yay. Yeah. Like, thank you, Shelly. Like, thank you so much. I just think people needed that personal, like, hey, you haven't paid. Um, because I know I was a little confused about how membership rolls. So um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I so think this has been a great exercise. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you. Great. All right, so let's keep moving. Uh, next one actually is the port captain's report. Um, so I received an email today uh, from Tom Mantooth. Unfortunately, he has resigned as port captain effective immediately. So that was just this morning. Uh, he did not state a reason. Uh, he did say that he couldn't uh, feel that he could accomplish the Boston Whaler uh, restoration program. I really personally hope that he's okay from a health perspective, particularly, you know, you know, we love Tom. Uh, he's been essential to the club. He's been 
what he was past Commodore and he's filled many, many roles in the club. Uh, I did inquire through Nancy. She wasn't quite sure. She didn't know, unfortunately, about um, him stepping down from port captain. Uh, this does, of course, mean that, you know, we do have this Boston Whaler project. Let's talk about that another time. Um, you know, it does mean that the port captain uh, position is currently vacant. That's something we'll talk about another time. I think the number one is really, you know, I know that I'm a fairly new member here. A lot of you know Tom very well. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, he's in a good spot. And if you can be a good support to him, then please, please do so. Uh, you know, it is very, very hard when we see uh, our members and people of the board, you know, getting to the point where there is some other something that's more important in their life than uh, board duties. We're very, very understanding of that. Uh, but for the most part, I just want to make sure we're all okay. All right, so I'm going to shelve the Boston Whaler conversation in that light uh, for another day. Uh, you know, it's true that we've had quite a few email backwards and forwards talking about that and, and the end tie and all that, but um, I think we'll, let's talk about that when we can do so respectfully. All right. Um, sorry, does anyone want to say anything? Or before I move on to the next thing, I don't want to just completely gloss that over. I mean, I'll say on the topic of people to stay in touch with, anybody who knows John New, certainly mm -hmm. encouraged to keep calling him because he okay. really appreciates those calls. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. I appreciate you bringing that up. Okay, so the final one on the board reports is me, as it turns out. Um, first of all, uh, we did have a victory this month. Uh, we have now secured an entai at Alameda Marina for race committee, which is fantastic. Uh, I believe it's both 836, uh, but it's the entai. We have it. It's a bit of a schlep right now because there's a lot of construction happening at the marina. But um, if I remember correctly, we already have a box with the IYC banner on it where we can keep some things going forward. Uh, we can use it as an end tie so we can actually put uh, the Boston Whaler there once we get the bottom done and stuff like that. Uh, my, I would like to make sure that we establish a presence there. A la, you know, I, I made some comments before about, hey, look, we should really get the Boston Whaler sorted out soon, get a bottom on it so we can keep it in the water just so that it is very, very clear that we are using this anti. Part of that is because we were gifted the anti by Alameda Marina. I really, really appreciate that gift. I think it's really, really kind of them to do it. And we should really show that we are using it. This is not something that we've lobbied for for months and now are just letting to rot. You know, we're not gonna be, during the summer months, we definitely won't just be using it once a month. We're gonna be using it a lot more frequently than that, uh, but, I think that this is really solving a lot of problems for us. First of all, having a place for a race committee to, to go to every race, which is fantastic. Uh, and then second to that, if we do get the Boston water, so when we do get the Boston whaler into the water, uh, it'll totally solve that problem of having to get the, the boat off the trailer and needing specific volunteers who have hitches and physical strength and stuff like that. It will be great to have a boat that anyone could hop into and start setting marks. Uh, so, you know, this is a dream for me. We're probably about 30% of the way um, to having a situation where the Boston Whaler can just live there and everyone will be happy and, you know, race committee will just go so much more smoothly. Uh, but this is a huge milestone. So thank you very much. I, I wish David Shea was here because I know he's been polling a lot. Eric, thankfully, you've been polling with Eileen for a long time, which is great. Uh, and finally, oh, this has been going great. on for a year. Mm -hmm. It's been going for a year. I know it's true. Yeah. So I appreciate I appreciate all the effort that you guys have put into it. Is he, is now it, all we got to do is see if we can get the guy around five to move to eight. Exactly. And it'll be golden. Exactly. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that is be it, great? Is it long enough to have both Island Girl and the Chase boat? Um, Eric, do you no. know? No, no, one the not other. yet. There's so we only have half of eight. There's one side of eight that has another boat on it, and it's a big giant trawler, and um, it sort of flops over into the space of eight. But hey, it's free. Let's not exactly. talk the boat okay. until we're ready to. Yep, that's it. 
All right. And then, um, look, I'm just going to share my screen one more time, in part because I think the doggy pics are cute. Um, I do want to give special commendation this month uh, to Shelley. First of all, thank you so, so much. You are our membership chair. You've definitely, in your first month, proven yourself well and truly. Uh, you know, it, it goes beyond. I mean, eventually, I, you know, I, I was setting the target of us having 300 members by the end of the year. I have a feeling the way that you're doing it, your trajectory, your willingness to get out there and just like email people, we could well exceed that. You know, I, I think That's I was being real. quite conservative. Let's do it. Let's do it. So thank you very much. Um, I also want to give special commendation to Sherry. And this is going to get it so confusing. So you guys are going to pick different months for your commendations, I reckon. <laughs> um, as publications chair, you've done a spectacular job. New images, a uh, whole new look for this series of online events. I know that you talked about creating a style guide for Island Yacht Club. Uh, yeah. These are all things that will really strengthen our digital presence. And you know, right now, I think that's really where our muscle is, like in being uh, a digital club, a club that really embraces uh, how people you know, interact with, with clubs and brands today. Uh, so thank you very much for making us look really professional. I really do appreciate it. So. It was impressive. And, there were 70 some people on Cammy's talk last uh -huh, night, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. all over. So, yeah. yeah, it was very, very well done. Very well done. Um, okay, so look, actually, we've covered we've covered all this because you guys were just really good at, at you know just covering bases. Uh, we will catch up with Lloyd later on, uh, just to talk about budgets in particular. But I think we've covered all this. This is great. Um, okay, so before we enter sort of free for all mode, uh, just mark your calendars. We do have uh, Island Days race coming up this weekend. Cannot wait. I cannot wait to get back on the estuary. Oh, guys, I'm so <laughs> looking forward to just being with you all and doing some good competitive racing. That's awesome. Bring some wind with you. <laughs> Bring right? some wind no. with you. <laughs> I know. I wish I could I could show you. It's been howling the last few days, and then it stopped. Uh, it's actually the sun came out, and it's kind of beautiful now. But, uh, yeah, Sydney pretty much every day has been uh, 12 to 24 knots. Oh, and it just it go basically the needle goes whoa whoa so you'll be cruising around and all of a sudden your boat will just go just ass over tip you know like it's really quite it, it's a really strange place to sail but it's been very challenging and it's taught me a lot so anyway hoping to bring that back um yeah. <laughs> all those learnings some of it some of it yeah. um but anyway so uh, apart from the, the racing, we have uh, what's new and what's working in sailing instrumentation. We've just put tickets for that on sale, $25, $20 for members. So all of you guys can get in for 20 bucks if you haven't paid for one of our packages already. Uh, I've tentatively put down April 1 as the uh, Island Days Awards Party slash let's get all get together slash let's, uh, you know, bring along all the community organizations that... Um, we will be donating money to. Let's sort of talk about that offline. I think about whether or not, uh, you know, that will be going ahead. And I think March is probably going to be a good time to work out how things are trending. And then finally, we have our next board meeting on March 8th. Um, a lot more to come. We're going to talk about Boston Whaler work parties, crab feeds, a day in March as well, when we can actually go through the shipping container and do an initial let's start farming things out run. But um, yeah, gosh, we're doing great guys. How are you all feeling? I'll open it up Good. to you now. <laughs> One thing also, I sent the thing out about the Boathouse Tavern having barbecue. Oh yeah, what's um, going on? Yeah. It's awesome. And I'd also say, you know, they got that back room, man. If everyone's vaxxed and boosted, why don't we actually have in-person board meetings <laughs> in their back room they offer I like it. yeah i like it i, like I really it. do like it if and we also, are yeah they also said for sunday if we wanted to promote like brunch and stuff they're gonna have like deep fry stuff so they can offer french fries and things that will make people drink more Right. Yes, please. So we could. No, do, well, they, like you said we could do like omelets and hot plate kind of stuff if we wanted. Yeah, so they can't have. 
Oh, go ahead. They can't have any open flame and they can't have a true fryer. They're going to have air fryers because he doesn't have a fume hood. They can't have a true fryer, but he'll do, he's, he, what they want to really do is fish and chips. That's what their goal is. Monique can oh, probably talk so more good. about this than anything else. So good. So, but we the only thing you. about it that, the, the one and only thing that, about it that gives me mixed feelings is mm -hmm. remember the post race events were a little bit of a revenue source for us. Not huge. Um, but enough to kind of jog the needle a little bit, kept adding money to our coffers. So mm -hmm. I haven't had that conversation with him yet. If, you know, he'd be interested in maybe doing some sort of sharing around that or, or how we'd actually manage mm -hmm. that, but something yeah. to think about, because he will have food without a doubt. He will have food, but are oh, we going to get, him, you know? Yeah. It, it just yeah. Thing. I think at least for outdoor post-race stuff, they would probably allow us to have our own barbecue outside. You know, I could bring a folding table and stuff and just have condiments for burgers and impossible burgers and hot dogs and stuff. But I'm also thinking for, you know, Sunday, although we don't have too many races left, you know, the Sunday brunch kind of thing before the race. I bought a pizza last time, which of course took forever. But yeah. <laughs> um, I think we'll probably do the same thing again for this Sunday, just simply because mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay. instead of trying to pull food in, there's so many moving parts right now. The other thing we got to yeah. talk about, Chris, is who's going to launch the boat? When are we going to launch the boat? Yeah. Feeling like probably Saturday, then. probably. Saturday. And yeah, who's dropping the, the marks? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's check out the buoys, make sure we got enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. An anchor. And just for everybody to know, I had um, Esther give me 10 um, burgies. So I have mm -hmm. 10 burgies on my boat, as well as all the awards. I awesome. plan on bringing them to Boathouse if we have a table or something set up. We haven't done that yet. And then yes, what we might oh. want to do is prior to the race, just throw that out there. Hey, if you want dockside delivery or post-race delivery of your burgie, then that'll save us on shipping. So I've got them. And then Chris, you awesome. gave uh, the burgie to Boathouse. So they're officially branded as ours. Yes, it should be up and prominently displayed now next to the fish. No. Gosh, <laughs> next to the fish. It's official. <laughs> oh my God, it's official. I like it. <laughs> Dude, this is great. No, seriously, I'm so excited about Boathouse Tavern in its new, uh, new incarnation. Uh, it sounds like the owners, the new owners are really motivated. Can't wait. And thank you very much, Chris, for sending through the picture, the barbecuing. Let there be life. I mean, finally, finally, we have something yeah. like that. Grouchy Keith, we, you know. <laughs> well, it was well, a good sort. It's, new year. it's a new year in so many it's ways. It's a new year. Oh, All they're right. cleaning up, too. They hey, mowed the, they moved the mm -hmm. weed patch mm -hmm. slash lawn. So. Right. I put, a, I put a question up in the chat, but I haven't heard anything or seen anything. I'm sorry? Um, I put a question up in the chat that I thought I'd just go ahead and throw out because some of you, Shelly and, and Eric, probably mostly would know. Um, mm -hmm. What's the deal with Grand Street Bait and oh, yeah. Tackle compared to Boathouse Tavern? It's the same so place. I've seen the sign. Okay, it's the same place, different owner? Yeah, so that sign, uh, Do we have to call for those of you that know the Grand history, Street? there's a bunch of people that probably know the history of this much better than I. But if you go straight down past the marina, on the left-hand side, there's a little construction place. That used to be the Grand Street Bait and bait Tackle. And when it closed, it used to be a killer venue. I mean, it was like bar fights on a weekly basis over there. I remember when I was a kid trying to sneak into the place to get drinks, and they, they'd almost always serve you underage. But anyways, that's a whole other story. But when that closed or converted to what it is, they took the sign and moved it down to Boathouse. So it's just... Mm -hmm. A legacy of an older place but boathouse is where that sign is that you're thinking of so mm -hmm. boathouse is still the the business right or is yeah. it grand street? that grand street that sign is from the wrong place something tells me at some point he's going to change all that because he's already put a cover over a different style of um more like a nautical style over the old boathouse um sign that was on the building itself mm. right well mm -hmm. but i think they just Grab so, that sign because they wanted the sign. A lot of his clientele are raiders, so he put the oh. pirate eye patch stuff on there. Um, but he totally welcomes us, so you know we get a look. 
have to get along with the Raiders crowd, but they are going to be <laughs> the football. There were Raiders and Niners. We watched, we watched both of them. Uh, and I think Christian himself so is a the, Raider fan. So but, for the record, should I just keep calling it Boathouse Tavern and not yes, worry yes. about Grand Street? Yeah. Don't worry about Grand Boathouse Street. Tavern. Grand okay. Street's erroneous. Okay. Thanks. Years ago, Boathouse, no, relatively recently, Boathouse used to sell bait and tackle. I think that's why he grabbed or somebody grabbed that sign. But that sign is not from there. It's from the, the place down the road. Right. So what'd they do with the, with the boathouse sign? You just chuck it? Oh, no, it's still there. It's on the side of the building. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's two signs, The light, two lighted signs. The one that's on the building says boathouse. Now it's covered with another one that says boathouse. It looks a little bit nicer. But the Grand Street sign you're talking about was originally down pole. at the yeah. It was on the pole, but that was originally down at the other place down the road. It's no right. longer there. Okay. It's a construction house. All right. That makes sense. I like the name Boathouse Tavern better anyway. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. It's got, it's got more class. <laughs> All right. So let's start to wrap things up. I think if <laughs> you guys are happy, I know, I know. I had to end with this picture. Uh, you guys are so great. Um, so Gosh, thank you very much for a great board meeting this month. I know that there are a whole bunch of things we're going to do offline and workout dates and stuff like that, but it's all very doable. I just want to thank you all for your commitment to turning up each month uh, for these board meetings and discussing these issues critically. Uh, it saves us all a lot of time if we can all just sort of tune into uh, your wavelength. And so, you know, really, really do appreciate you coming here and sharing uh, everything that you've learned or achieved and accomplished during this month versus just emailing you uh, or being just emailing the board. So thank you very, very much. Um, anything final to say before I put the gavel yeah, on the virtual table? You, can't wait to see you back here. <laughs> right. I can't wait. I can't wait. I really can't right. wait. Serious, guys. It's, it's been long. good. It's been good doing remote, but I mean, honestly, I'm ready to come back. I guess ready one, thing, to have you back. one thing I'd put out there is um crewless you know we got this race coming mm -hmm. take somebody and you and i ross have got to go over and talk to mary because she's got a whole crowd of people going through there yeah um, that's really want, good mm -hmm. get people out for our events starting right soon. right i agree with you mary did approach me about uh speaking at you know after god I haven't heard back from her, so I'm going to follow up with her and see uh, if we can get that on the calendar. Yeah, I talked to her and she said, when you're back, for sure. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. I think that's it, guys. Um, thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. And a, we're right a, on time. Have an uneventful flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I might be I might be a little tired on Sunday, but I'll do my best. But we'll still take you out to Forbidden Island. <laughs> oh, please do. I can't wait. I really can't wait. Oh, I can't okay. wait. Okay, we'll see you when you're back. All, All right. right, see you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Monique. Thanks, Good everyone. Night. Take care. Thanks, Bye. Tom. Glad you're here. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Julie. Thank you. Bye, Sherry. Bye, Alice. Bye. We're officially over at 1927. Good on you. Thank you. Bang. Sure. <laughs> Bye.